Hey people, welcome to The Run Sisters, Kieran here, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about these. These are the Nothing Ear One set of true wireless headphones. They're kind of like a rival to the Apple AirPods Pro, but they come in under 100 pounds and under 100 dollars. They're also sort of, in the, in the mold of the AirPods Pro, they're kind of designed for daily use, but they do have active credentials, so we wanted to find out if they're any good on the run. I've been putting them to the test, and here is what I've found. So before we get into the nitty gritty of the run test, here's some essentials that you need to know about the Nothing Ear One. Now these are really being billed as a cheaper alternative to the Apple AirPods or the AirPods Pro. They offer five hours of run time on the buds. You get a further 29 in the charging case. They're IPX4 rated, so that's splash, sweat, and weather resistant. Pop the buds in the case for 10 minutes and you'll get up to 50 minutes of listening time with active noise cancellation on, or 1.2 hours with active noise cancellation off. Pop the case on charge for 10 minutes and you'll get six hours of power with ANC on up to eight hours with ANC off. Now the buds weigh 4.7 grams or two ounces each. So they're nice and lightweight. That's at the lighter end of the true wireless scale. You've got 11.6 mil drivers. You've got active noise cancellation in there. There is a transparency mode as well. And there's some custom EQ controls in the app too, although these are a little bit more pared back than you might find on other true wireless headphones. They've got Bluetooth 5.2 connectivity. There's in-ear detection, and you can also use one bud independently from the other. So onto the run test then, and first up let's talk about fit. That's majorly important. If they don't stay in, they're no good. Now these I have found to be pretty solid. So what you can see here, you've got this kind of solid casing and you've got this kind of stem design, which is pretty much along, along the lines of kind of the AirPods Pro, sort of slightly different kind of engineering here, but you've also got those with though, with your kind of classic ear gels. Now you get three sizes of ear gels in the box, which is pretty standard, small, medium, and large. I tend to use the medium across all headphones. And for me, actually, because these buds are lightweight and I get a good seal with those gel sizes, I've had no problems with them falling out at all whatsoever, even on, on kind of steep descents. They just feel like they sit in the ear nicely. There's not, because they're so light and there's not too much of bulk of the bud outside as you can with some true wireless buds, you don't get any of that tugging that can happen with heavier earbuds. So from that point of view, I've actually found these really, really comfortable to run in. They're light, they kind of stay put. For me, I get a good seal. I also don't have any of that kind of problem that you might get sometimes with this with a good seal where you get that kind of thudding from your footsteps, none of that. So yeah, on a, from a fit perspective, for my ears, for, for a set of in-ear buds that don't have wingtips and that don't have an ear hook design, I think these have performed pretty well. So when it came to the kind of sound that you get from these headphones as, as well, I was really kind of impressed actually by the sort of full-bodied sound that you get it's not up there, you know, with the likes of the Jabra and the Jaybird necessarily. You're going to get a better experience, I think, also from an AirPods Pro. But you're talking about a set of headphones that are often like two thirds or half the price of some of those other more pricey rivals. And the experience that I had from these was ample. You know, it was good enough, I think, to make these a really interesting prospect. You know, it's not quite as refined or as punchy as you might get from like a Jabra Elite 7 or a Jaybird Vista 2. But overall, what you're getting here, I think, is a really kind of satisfying listening experience. That's good enough for me on the run at that price point, for sure. I'm not a particularly kind of big kind of audiophile. You know, I like it sort of fairly, I like, I like it loud. I like it kind of to fill my ears. I like it to be full. I like to, you know, to get a decent bit of bass in there, not to be too tinny. And all of those sort of Standard things that I think I would expect from a, a good pair of running headphones are here present in these buds. Now, like the Vista 2 and the Jabra Elite Active 7, you can tweak the EQ in the app. That's custom EQ. Although it's not quite as complex or kind of in-depth as you'll get in those where you can actually sort of set your own sound profiles and save them. With this, you're kind of going to get four basic settings that you can switch between depending on what situation you're in. They're kind of presets, I guess. You can't fiddle with, with anything over and above that. So you're going to get you know something called balanced sound you get another one which adds more treble and there's another there's another setting that adds more bass and then there's one if you're going to be in voice mode so you know you can make differences you know, the differences were fairly subtle i sort of found but you can beef the bass up or beef the treble up a little bit it's not you know as as, as in-depth and as good as the custom experience that you'll get from those other headphones but again we're talking about a product that comes in at under a hundred pounds or a hundred dollars here so, you know, for what you do get, I still think that's, you know, it's a nice touch to have that in there. So to test out the ANC and the here through transparency mode and kind of regular mode on the Nothing Ear One, I've come to kind of a busy road that I normally run, a lot of traffic, lots of engines running. And to be honest, when my music's playing, I can't really discern too much of a difference between 
ANC and off. It's not that pronounced, the difference. You can hear it a bit more if you've got no music in the background and just got that kind of, just, just listening to the sounds around you. Transparency mode does let in a lot more sound. Haven't had too much wind problem with that, but I don't think the ANC on this is all that strong. I don't think it's something that I would necessarily buy these headphones to benefit from that ANC in terms of the kind of power of it. At least not out, maybe in the office. I had some builders working, drilling, setting up wardrobes and stuff in my house earlier in the week. And actually it did cancel out some of that and some of the voices from them. But overall, I don't think it's, it's not a feature that I think sells these headphones. So when it came to the controls, I found them fairly easy to use on the move. There's a series of kind of taps and swipes in order to control. You can do some custom controls in the app so you can change what some of the controls are on each of the buds. You can choose between a triple tap for next, previous song or no action, and you can use tap and hold on either bud to activate noise cancellation. Interestingly though, you can't do that to switch to transparency mode. I'm not sure why that's the case. Um, the volume controls are done by kind of swiping up and down on the stem here. There was a little bit of lag with that. It wasn't necessarily the most responsive, but you kind of get used to it. I don't tend to be someone who fiddles too much with, the, with these things on the move anyway. I'm sort of like a plug and play. So I didn't have too much of a problem with that. But if you do like to adjust the volume and tap through on, on your headphones, then that's one thing to, to consider. That there is a little bit of lag here. The other thing that I found that was really interesting is that you can, in the app, you can adjust the latency mode for when you're watching videos. And that's supposed to solve that problem of kind of syncing the audio with videos that you might be watching on your phone. It was, it was relatively successful, not completely. Now with the pairing and the connectivity, these connected brilliantly each time straight out of the case to my iPhone. I also found that they switch really nicely between Mac and iPhone, and that's not true of all true wireless buds. Sometimes that kind of, it doesn't like it if you've been using them on your iPhone, you come home from a run and then you go on a Zoom call. That worked fine with these for me. I did have some dropouts whilst running of the audio when paired to an iPhone though on some of the runs. Though I also kind of tested it paired to a Coros Vertex watch and that had no problems at all there. It stayed connected nicely to that. So when it comes to battery life, the runtime listed with active noise cancellation off is five hours. I think it's four or four and a half hours with ANC on. Now the buds there are doing better than something like the Apple AirPods Pro. They beat those for kind of runtime on the buds themselves. You get a further 29 hours in the charging case for a total of 34 hours. That's with active noise cancellation off. That drops to 24 hours with ANC on. You can use both buds independently. That's really handy if you're ultra running and you wanna use one whilst the other is charging in the case. So you can, you can, A, you can extend the overall lifetime of listening to music, but you can also make sure that you've got music whilst one's charging and the other's not. So that's kind of handy if you're doing something that's very long. In my tests, these actually lived up pretty close to their billing. They easily cope with a four and a half hour marathon that I did. So I think that five hour billing is pretty accurate with active noise cancellation off. The other thing here, you're gonna get built in in-ear detection. So it knows when you've got them in. When you don't have them in, there's an auto pause power down that saves battery life when you're not using them. Again, not all buds do that, they don't auto switch off. So you can come back to something like the AirPods Pro and find that they've run out of juice, whereas that won't happen with these. Final thing to note is if you like wireless charging, this case will charge the buds wirelessly with compatible charging stations. Now, another major thing to talk about is kind of Find My Buds. There is a version of Find My Buds on the Nothing One ear, but it's very different to the how you'll get in from, from a sort of Jaybird Vista or those Jabra Elites or the Actives 85 and 75T. And as much as what happens is in the app, you can press a button and this will play an audio sound, really high pitched sound to tell you where the buds are you can't track the case, and it's not gonna show you on a map the last location that it knew where the buds were, which is what you get with those other two sets of headphones. It's just gonna let you sort of play a sound, so you need to be near the headphones in order to kind of hear that sound and discover them. So onto the verdict then for the Nothing One ear. Well, I really like these headphones. I think they're a really, really compelling alternative to much pricier headphones like the Apple AirPods Pro, the Jaybird Vista, and the Jabra Elite 7. Active and the Active 75T and the Jabra Elite 85Ts. I think I've got the names right there. I think they're a really, really sort of compelling. Under $100 or under 100 pounds, you're getting an awful lot of value here from these headphones. Yes, the sound isn't top notch. It's not right up there, but it is perfectly kind of satisfying on the run. That battery life is good, nice and competitive as well, particularly when you add the charging case and the time on the runtime on the buds together. That's up there and competitive too. 
I think they're actually among the best buds I've ever tested for under a hundred pounds. I mean, I, I just think the value really is incredible. They've got a beautiful, distinct design as well. The case feels well put together. It's not the most portable. Uh, it's a little bit less portable than some of the others, but you know, it's got some really sort of pleasing kind of designs. You know, the fit I think is solid for this type of bud. So if you've got ears that can kind of generally handle an in-ear bud, I don't think you're gonna have any problems with them there. The sound quality and customization isn't quite what you're gonna get from some of those higher priced headphones but it does have some customization that again, you know, just adds a little bit of extra value here. I think overall for under a hundred pounds, these are an excellent pair of kind of crossover running daily headphones that I, yeah, I think are well worth a look. I think they would also make a fantastic Christmas present for somebody in your life who's a runner who might like to listen to music whilst they do so. So there you have it, that's our take on the Nothing One Earbuds. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out all of our other headphone reviews. We've got one up for the Jabra Elite 7, which are a pair that are worth considering, slightly pricier. We've also got a Jaybird Vista 2. We are soon gonna be putting out a new best headphones that will round up all of the best that have come out in 2021, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again soon on the Run Testers. See you later.